G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today I have another Courtney Ryan special for you guys who don't know who Courtney Ryan is. She is a very large YouTuber with just about 800k subscribers who does every now and again touched on um, topics relating to men. As always, I like to review these, give my take on the female's view um, of men's issues. So this particular video is called Five Major Signs That You're Being a Simp. Okay, so let's see what our good old Courts has to say and let's get cracking. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan. And today, this video is gonna be a little bit of tough love from me to you, but only because I care about you and I don't want you to be manipulated and used. So today I'm gonna be going over five signs that you might- From somebody who's probably manipulated and used a whole bunch of dudes be a simp and i hate that word and i hate to say it but i think that's the best way to describe what i'm talking about today so not only am i going to go over the five signs that you might be a simp but i'm also going to go over how you can stop this behavior that is getting you nowhere but friend zoned broke and sad so first one okay so i have to agree with the first thing the point she said i think simp is a really overused word I think it has gotten to the point now because a lot of guys are frustrated in the dating market. I think it's more around even younger men. If you even talk to a girl or go on a date with a girl, you're a simp. Like I, I don't, I don't think that I don't believe that at all. I think that's a real stupid view, in my honest opinion. Um, I'm going to see what she has to say here, but I'll, I'll tell you my views of, of of what a simp is. It's essentially just a dude who puts all this effort, time, and money to someone with absolutely no return and no real view or hope of a return, right? To the outside world, he's trying and trying and trying and he's floating around, but he's a, he's a laughing stock or joke to her and her friends and other guys that see his behavior. I want to start by defining what a simp is according to the internet and basically it is a man who does way too much for a girl that he likes that does not like him back so I think the biggest difference between a simp and what would be considered a gentleman is the fact that a simp does not have any self-respect and does not know when it's time to walk away so a gentleman can still be chivalrous to a woman do nice things for her and be sweet but also knows when it is no longer serving him and has the ability to walk away from it even if he is emotionally invested so I think that self-respect thing is a huge part of being a simp and more so a lack thereof if you are a simp and I found this I love that I love where women always talk about gentlemen oh, I just really love a gentleman so a gentleman basically guys I'm going to translate that it's a guy who does whatever I want him to do makes me feel special takes me out gives me the princess treatment but I will bang him so that's a gentleman um I've always thought it was really funny when I've heard women say I really love a gentleman I'm just like yeah you want a guy who just like still falls over for you, but you do give him sex instead of the guy who does that and gets no sex, which is a simp. This quote online, and I also really like this as well. So a simp is a man that puts himself in a submissive position under women in hopes of winning them over without the female bringing anything to the table. <laughs> so maybe you're putting too much value in her for absolutely no reason. Of course, I think it's important to be respectful towards women, and it's okay to be a gentleman, but you have to know when to walk away. And if you're doing any of these five things, you're not being a gentleman, you're being a simp. So the number one sign that you might be in this position is an eagerness to impress or to go out of your way to go above and beyond for this girl. And plain and simple here, you might just be trying way too hard. I think when you're a confident guy that knows what he brings to the table, you don't feel this need to prove yourself all the time or to impress a girl because she's just going to know that you bring that because of your confidence. And That's I the thing, you don't need to go over and, be of, uh, over and above. If you feel like you need to do that for somebody to actually be interested in you, uh, young guys, I can tell you from experience, don't waste your fucking time. I've wasted heaps of time, heaps of money in my past, um, you know, doing doing things like that because that's the narrative that is um, pumped into young men's heads growing up. You know, over the top ro romantic gestures, um, spending money, doing nice things, so really not getting much in return apart from the pleasure. This is a company. This is a comment I really also despise: the pleasure of a woman's company. I'm like, get over yourself. It's um should be a pleasure for both people and one person really shouldn't be um especially in 2024 maybe in 1961 but in 2024 one person shouldn't be severely disadvantaged just to want to have the pleasure of another human being's company I also want to say that doing sweet things for someone is amazing, but there is such thing as doing too much. So if you're taking her on all these shopping sprees, buying her all this nice stuff, 
showing up with flowers, sending flowers to her work even though she hasn't called you back. <laughs> Not a good thing. When you try too hard to impress, it's just gonna show her that you're seeking her attention and validation, which to a woman is not attractive. Again, there's a huge difference between just being yourself and being confident and trying to impress or show off. And we wanna avoid doing the latter. You just yeah, so translation, it's okay if she wants you, know, you to bang her, but it's not okay if she doesn't. Yep, cool. You just will not have to do this with a girl that genuinely likes you back. And if you notice yourself trying way too hard and impressing all the time and going above and beyond, like I said, you need to take a step back and look at the situation and think, okay, I'm putting in all this time and effort and energy and I'm getting nothing in return. So it's time to walk away. That's the biggest difference again between a gentleman and a simp is that ability to have self-respect and walk away from someone that is not giving you anything in return. So the gentleman is still pouring a whole bunch of money into women which i don't advise guys so it's only going to get you one type of woman all right good old being good old mr gentleman yeah you might you might be physically attractive as well but you're over the top chivalrous and women are going out with you because they want the benefits of the behavior um, and the treatment you're giving them um, whether it be also gifts and just experiences as well as the physical guess what happens when maybe you can't afford to take them out anymore or, or for whatever reason you need both need to grow up and maybe you marry a girl who saw you as the gentleman right but you have commitments in life like you got a mortgage or you've got whatever it is you got to pay for stuff you got to calm things down and start being adults those chicks are out the door bloody quick smart i can tell you that much been there and done it and this leads me into my next point, which is nothing is reciprocated. This is a surefire sign that you are 100% wasting your time. If your time, effort, and energy is not being reciprocated from this person, you have to walk away, no excuses. And I know that it's hard to walk away from someone when you are emotionally invested, but if this person doesn't even like you back, say you're not even a in a relationship with this girl, maybe it's a girl that you just saw online that you're obsessed with, maybe it's a girl you went on one date with who is not texting you or really calling you back unless she wants attention from you. This is not good, guys. I think the worst thing I see for this one is guys doing this for girls that they don't even know. And so many different things that you guys might be doing fall under this category. Some examples here might be subscribing to her OnlyFans, paying her to message you, blowing up her DMs, commenting on every photo with fire emojis, buying her things off of her Amazon wish list. You guys have to cut this crap out if nothing is being reciprocated in this group. Yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah, I mean, like, she's right on that point. I think there are too many guys out there that think just by hounding girls on the internet is going to get you somewhere. Uh, being super thirsty, telling women they're beautiful or something is going to be some sort of comment that's going to get them turned on, like giving them over the top attention. While most of the time it is women who um, experience these behaviors, I've been on the other side of it too. Uh, guys where I've had uh, women chasing me around and I wasn't interested in them and telling me how good I am and I'm perfect and all this sort of stuff. And it really actually put me off them. Uh, I didn't want to deal with them. Um, so I can definitely understand that point girl is not your girlfriend. Which leads me into my next point, which might be the worst one out of all of them on this list, and that is paying her bills. If you are not married to this girl, you should not be paying her rent, her car payment, her student loans, a vacation that you aren't on. You shouldn't be doing it fucking uh, full stop. Um, guys who've done all these things and been married to women, only for once those bills are wiped, to be pissed off and thrown off into the gutter, uh, once their use uh, and purpose is served, is very, very common. A lot of guys don't hear about it. I've heard it happen heaps of times. I've had guys writing to me tell me about it. I've heard about it on other men's channels. Uh, it's a very, very common thing. You think you're gonna just going to uh, marry a girl and then what? what's the expectation here? Oh, you marry a girl, but that's okay to start paying her rent and bills. No, nah, fuck that. Like You need to marry someone who can actually contribute because if you're the guy who marries... Uh, the woman uh, who doesn't contribute much financially or not a similar amount, guess what happens to you in family court, right? That was what saved me, guys. I went through a divorce. Um, and the, the thing that stopped me from being completely wiped out was she made good money. You know, she had a similar superannuation balance as what I did, okay? So while I copped a punch in the guts, it wasn't fun. I definitely uh, was only badly winded and not knocked out. So going and paying for women and all that shit, guys, it leads you one way. And that is fucked. 
It's just ridiculous some of the things I've seen, you guys. I wish I didn't even have to address this one, but I think it's happening way more often than I would like to admit. I've seen a ton of girls post videos on TikTok about how to get a sugar daddy or how to manipulate guys into paying for all of your stuff, and it's really sad. And it's sad because I think a lot of guys do this thinking they're gonna win the girl over or somehow she's gonna fall for him and wanna be with him, when the reality is she has no interest in you in the first place and just wants you to fund her fun bills and her entire life. So if that's not something that you're interested in and you know, you're not Why signing you up be? for that, then you have to stop doing it. I think- Why would you be interested in doing that? I think there are some guys out there that actually get uh, pleasure from from being financially used up. I've heard about it. I find it really strange. And maybe that's why you hear about these dudes who go on early cans and you know spend all their money or their pay to get their pay. And like, yeah, I spent fifteen grand on this girl in a month's pay or two months pay or whatever that is, three months pay. I spent fifteen grand on this girl. Yeah, my favorite creator. You know. So there are weirdos out there who'll do shit like that. Well, what guy willingly sign up to that deal? Come on, Courtney. Come on, Courtney. No guys are really going to sign up to the death deal willingly. They always sort of dangle a carrot. And guys who know no better uh, think they're going to get something at the end of the day. She's going to finally realize how much of a great guy he is, how much of a provider he is, how um, stable and secure he is. All things that men are taught are what women are really attracted to uh, in the man to have a legitimate desire for him, which is false. You could have not have two bucks to rub together um, or offer anything. And if a girl is right into you uh, and has genuinely wants you she'll bang you behind a dumpster next to the chinese restaurant with the rotting fish in the bin i don't give a fuck up against the wall like you don't need to spend a cent pay for lives or do anything all right guys halfway through if you're enjoying the content please sub to the channel aiming for 10k subscribers so we'd greatly appreciate you joining us on the growth journey and all that other general stuff that people say comment like and guys to really help me out let's watch the videos through to the end or as far as you can take cheers I think it's just important to see it for exactly what it is and not what you want it to be. I think a lot of times guys sign up for this knowing that's what they're getting themselves into. There's sites about like financial domination, yep. um, being a sugar daddy and all of that where the guys are like willingly signing up that's for that. Weird. And at the end of the day, I cannot tell you guys how you should be spending your money. You are in control of yourself and your wallet and I cannot control you. However, if I were you, I would highly recommend not doing this and just- I'd highly recommend doing this, um, but if you want to do it, here's my contact details. <laughs> know that I would never do that. You can spend your money however you please. It's your money, not mine. It's not my place to tell you what you should and should not spend your money on, but just know what you're signing up for, know what you're getting yourself into, and be able to see it for what it is and not what you want it to be. My next point is you pedestalize, and by this I mean you put this girl on such a high pedestal that she does nothing wrong, she can do no wrong, and she is going to walk all over you. Putting a girl on a pedestal, or really just anyone in general, is one of the worst things you can do for not only yourself but also for her it's just going to lead to a ton of disappointment someone's always going to fall short there's always going to be disappointment there and it's not going to work out for anyone and it's going to create unnecessary pressure for you because you're going to go in thinking oh my god this girl is perfect i have to make sure this works out i have to do anything she wants me to do i have to say yes all the time i have to buy her stuff and pretty much everything on this list also falls into this category i think so i think that's i make a point about this in a lot of my own uh, videos and I did this with my very first girlfriend guys I made a rod from my own back like I, I wouldn't say I pedestalized her but I treated her very very well like, like when I say very well I mean just over the top you know taking on little holidays so I didn't, I'm not talking like overseas but you know taking her into state and you know doing all those you know dream world and sea world and all that shit and I, I didn't have a lot of money back then I was fucking 20 years old so I'm going and working all these jobs and saving all this money I'm buying her holidays taking her out two or three times a week like all expenses paid she never paid for anything I couldn't even get a, get her to buy me a coffee for three bucks, whatever they were back then. What did I learn from that? It's never appreciated in the end. It's never appreciated. Like you make a rod for your own back. The, the bar keeps going higher and higher and higher. So a lot of guys, they're taught, you know, oh, yeah, I'm a real big man, you know, yeah, I um, pay for my woman and I do this and that and the other. Um, that's a psyop, guys. That's a psyop. And women have been pushing this narrative in society on two men saying a good man does this and a good man does that and a perfect man does that all these guys that have done all these things a lot of these women divorce them throw them onto the road those good men are a lot of them are sitting at the end of the bar you know the old bloke beating up at the end of the bar that you say uh drinking beers and unshaven and disheveled because his life's been destroyed
think people who pedestalize people are willing to do anything and everything for them because they see no fault in this person and they don't want to lose them or they just really want to win them over and think that doing all these things is going to result in that when the reality is they'll probably just be using you walking all over you and manipulating you unless you're in some sort of relationship with them in that case if you can't say no to the person that you're dating without getting a horribly negative response then that is a huge red flag that you should be looking out for and yeah, the huge red flag but unfortunately guys Guys, uh, a lot of men put themselves in that position. I did that once again. I always talk about my first girlfriend. I, I like to tell you guys a bit about me and my past and why I feel like I can talk to you guys about this and, and, and share a little bit of wisdom. I've done all these things, okay? I, I, I have been over the top um, doing all this uh, notebook shit for fucking uh, a girlfriend. I've uh, been married, fucking divorced, divorce grave, all that stuff. I've been there, done it. That's why I tell you about my stuff. But a lot of guys uh, never learn. Okay, and they are scared to say no. Or they, um, if they go and do things uh, that they think that the wife or girlfriend's not going to like, they do it in secret. You know, they hide. It's like, um, say, for example, uh, you smoke cigarettes, uh, but you hide it from your wife. You're scared. She's going to get angry or mad at you. You hide. What's she going to think? All right? Because she said you can't. Or whatever it is. Or, you, or, or, or once again, I know a guy. I'm not going to say his name. Uh, he, he more or less told me that his wife, and they've been married for over 15 years now, said to him that if he didn't take her on holidays and um, he's in his 40s uh, if he didn't take her on holidays to uh, I was like Greek Islands Mykonos or something I don't know which one it is you know with all the party and shit like that and basically pretend old 21 again um, on an annual basis she was going to leave him and he just does it he didn't question it he was scared that she was going to leave him um, so he would keep paying like these $50,000 holidays it wasn't cheap shit like all over the top he was a very successful guy so this stuff happens you would think that this is common sense uh, guys generally don't like to rock the boat uh, due, due to the fact that women can make your life very hard, especially if you're living with them. Um, if, you've got a, if you've got a wife or girlfriend you're living with, uh, you rock that boat, uh, you just can't go home. You, you're stuck there with her. So a lot of guys will just go along with the program tow the line because it's not worth the outcome. And it is true. It very much is a big red flag, but this is a very common thing. And I've done these things in the past. This last point on this list kind of ties into that one as well. And that is you are always readily available. You will drop anything for this girl. It's totally okay to make time for the people in your life that are important to you and make people a priority. However, when you're available 24 seven, you would go to her beck and call at the drop of a hat. This is when it becomes an issue. Not only does it make you look needy and clingy, but it also makes you look like you have no life, like you have nothing going on. So I see this happen in relationships, which is a little bit of a different story because I think in relationships still it's important to set boundaries but if this is happening with a girl that doesn't even like you back or that you're trying to win over and she's clearly just using you for a ride somewhere or asking you to borrow money or just be there for her all the time when she's giving you nothing back that is a huge issue guys i'd love to know like uh, does courtney ever say like tell us about her and her experiences like i don't watch a lot of her videos only the ones where she's giving sort of pretty average advice that's uh, so why I'm always really critical. Once again, women giving advice to men on men's issues and dating problems and dating complaints and, and all that sort of thing. They're just never going to understand what it's like to be a guy and why guys maybe resort to also doing these things because women are very hard to get for the majority of men. Okay? That's why. But as I said, and I always say this in all these women's videos that I look at and review and comment on, uh, I have no issue with what she's saying. Like, it makes sense. But I think a lot of them also know these things because they've done it to guys before, whether they admit it or not, right? They, they, they've done all these things to guys, whether they even know they've done it. A lot of them can uh, string guys along and make them simp for them without even realizing they're doing it a lot of the time, all right? I always say... Be careful who you get your advice from because it's like me, once again, giving women advice on uh, period pain and cramping. I might know the theory if I read up on it, but I'm never going to know what it's like. All right, let's, let's see the last one. An example here would be she asks you to pick her up and drop her off somewhere. Maybe she asks you to pick her up and drop her off at a guy's house and you're willing <laughs> to do it ready, available for her 24-7. Wow, what? imagine that. Imagine that. You pick, drop a girl off uh, at a guy's house when you're not even... Yeah, I don't know, guys. That's a massive punch in the head. 
are you doing that? I know that's just an example, but being available 24 seven just really makes you look needy and clingy and like you have nothing going for yourself. So this is going to lead to her walking all over you, especially if you keep doing it. What you allow is what will continue. So if you're unhappy with the things that you're doing and the way that things are going because you're doing these things, it might be time to stop doing them. This is the same thing as the texting buddy. I see a lot of fill-in guys and attention guys fall under this category because you're always willing to text her, but then you ask her to hang out with you and she doesn't want to hang out. <laughs> it's like she clearly just wants you for attention. I think that's- She's clearly done it. She knows it from experience. There's nothing wrong with that, but at least be um, transparent about it. Probably the best example I can give in this category is the girl who just wants to text you all the time and get your attention 24 seven over text. But then when you ask her to meet up or hang out or get to know her, she wants no part of it. She avoids the conversation or she just comes up with some lame excuse. So see it for what it is, guys. Again, I think all of these things on this list can be avoided if you just see what is right in front of you instead of what you want it to be. I really hope that you guys find this video helpful. I probably didn't. Um, I guess there might be people out there who don't know these things. I think as men, we learn them along the way, but I guess there are many inexperienced men out there um, who think it's a good idea, once again, to take dating advice from women. I find it, I find it absolutely bizarre. I find it bizarre. And single women at that. Is she married? Um, you know, has she been a loyal uh, long-term maybe girlfriend to somebody? Like, well, how can you be accredited to give this advice? All right, and I think a lot of the time they, they, they can't. They just jump on a bandwagon. And hey, if that's what they're doing, cool. But, you know, just be careful what you're watching. It's just so much bullshit. That's why I do all this on this channel. Like, I just, I'm not so much attacking these people. I'm not attacking them personally. It's just, it's just, yeah, it just, it just beggars belief that you got 300,000 guys watching these videos. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. That's enough ranting from me today.